Starting off this countdown, we have Scar's corpse. The Lion King's character Scar can be seen in Hercules, but he's not alive. No, they show his dead body, which is pretty dark, Disney. Sheesh. So in Hercules, there's a scene where Hercules is wearing a lion on his body while he's getting painted. He then takes it off and throws it on the floor, and we can clearly tell that it's the body of Scar. So after the Lion King, Scar was skinned and then given to Hercules. How dark. And this was actually confirmed by Disney's lead animator. Andreas Deja worked on animating both Hercules and Hercules and Scar in The Lion King. So they threw this in as a little Easter egg. In our ninth spot, we have The Shining. And if you guys are liking this video so far, why don't you hit that thumbs up button? Because it really helps us out and I appreciate it. Stephen King's The Shining was referenced an awful lot all throughout Toy Story, which is super whack because we all know that The Shining is not a kid's movie and it's certainly not Disney friendly. First, let's take a look at the first Toy Story. Fans were quick to point out that the carpet in Sid's house looks exactly like the carpet in the hotel in The Shining. I mean, they are different shades, but it's the exact same design, which is also quite clever because then they're trying to use this to symbolize how terrified the toys feel inside of Sid's house by comparing it to how the characters felt living in the hotel in The Shining. Like 10 out of 10, that was super well done. But that's not all. There was another reference to The Shining, but this time in Toy Story 3. They used the number 237 a lot throughout this film. 237 is reference to room 237 in The Shining. This number can be seen on the license plate of a garbage truck, on a message Woody sent to a toy whose code name is Velocistar237, and on the side of a security camera in Sunnyside Daycare. In fact, one of the editors on the film admitted that these were all references to The Shining. I mean, it's kind of a weird movie to reference in a kid's film, but whatever. Moving on at number eight, we have Melted Olaf. Sadly, a lot of Disney characters don't have the happy ever after we thought they did. Next, let's take a look at Olaf from Frozen. He's such a fun and loving character, but sadly, he doesn't have the best ending. Sometime after Frozen, Olaf dies, he melts away, and his body can be seen in Moana. If you take a close look at the supplies Moana is carrying with her on her boat, you can see an oddly shaped carrot and a stick that looks like a hand. Looks exactly like Olaf's nose and hands. So Moana was using his nose as food and his arms as a possible fire starter for her mission. Well, that's dark. In our seventh spot, we have Finding Nemo, again. For this next Easter egg, let's take a look at the tearjerker of a movie, Brother Bear. For real, if this movie didn't make you cry, then you're a monster or your heart is made out of ice. Anyways, in one scene when the character is salmon fishing, we can see Nemo among the group of salmon that's about to be caught and eaten. First off, how the hell did Nemo, a tropical fish, get so far north? Like, Marlin must be tired of looking for your ass. Anyways, what does this mean? Well, it means that Nemo, the little rascal, went out again and got lost somehow. And then he ended up as someone's meal. I doubt he made it out alive this time. Now, it turns out that at this time, Disney and Pixar were feuding. So that might be why this creepy little cameo was put into the film. In our sixth spot, we have Skinned Sully. Now, I love the movie Monsters, Inc. So this one is pretty dark for all you fans out there. But Sully is dead. Yep, you heard me. He died sometime after Monsters, Inc. was released. So in the film, Randall always mentions how bad humans are. At one point, he says that humans skin monsters and make toilet seat covers out of their fur. Sadly, this foreshadowed the fate of Sully. In a Toy Story short called Toy Story Toons, Party Source Rex, there's a scene where we see a kid taking a bubble bath. And it just so happens that in the bathroom on the toilet seat is a fuzzy Sully seat cover. So Randall was right. Humans do skin the monsters and turn them into toilet seat covers. Poor Sully, he ended up being skinned alive. I wonder what happened to Mike then? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Boo Went Crazy. This next Disney Easter egg is accompanied with a pretty dark and crazy theory, so buckle your seatbelts. In the movie Brave in the Witch's Workshop, we can see a wood carving of Sully. Why would that be there? First off, Brave takes place hundreds of years before Monsters, Inc. does. The witch and Sully didn't exist at the same time, but she drew him. 
meaning at some point in her life, she must have met him. Well, theory goes that this witch in Brave is Boo from Monsters, Inc. I know it seems wild right now, but just hear me out. So Monsters, Inc. takes place in the future when humans don't exist anymore. It's theorized that the monsters use the doors to go back in time to a child's house to then collect their energy. Meanwhile, in Brave, we see that the witch magically disappears when she goes through doorways. Hmm, just like the scarers from Monsters, Inc. do. So theory goes that Boo couldn't forget about Sully. She missed him so much that when she grew up, she figured out how to teleport through doors. She then teleports through these doors in an attempt to stumble across Sully again. It's just sad because she did not age well. And who's gonna tell her that Sully is a toilet seat cover? Not me. Coming in at number four, we have The Shining Part Two. Toy Story isn't the only Disney movie to reference The Shining. The movie Coco does it too. And this is because the guy that added the Shining Easter eggs in Toy Story also worked on Coco. So in one scene, we see Dante the dog waking up from a nap. In the background, we see an ax stuck in a tree. We all didn't think much about it. We probably just missed it too. But the director said that the ax was modeled after one of the axes from The Shining. That's not the only reference though. In that same shot, right behind the ax, there is a red drum. The director said that this was a reference to Red Rum from The Shining, which we learned is murder backwards. You thought that was it? Think again. The Grady twins from The Shining also make an appearance. Yeah, you know, those creepy little twin girls in blue dresses? They're in Coco. As Coco runs through Frida Kahlo's Underworld Art Studio, we see a painting of the two twin girls. The director again confirmed this reference. So creepy. Yeah, let's put The Shining in a kid's movie, great. In our third spot, we have The Last Rex. Rex from Toy Story can be seen in the 2008 film Wally. -E. In one scene, we see him in the back among Wally's -E collection of human junk. Now, if you think about this, this Easter egg is actually very depressing. Rex is all alone in a world that has been completely destroyed. All of his friends are dead. He's alone, isolated, and unloved. And as we know from all the Toy Story movies, loneliness really gets to these sentient toys. Rex is probably so anxious and depressed now. Moving on to number two, we have Herbie Fully Drowned. Speaking of sentient things, our favorite car Herbie from Herbie Fully Loaded has died. This car has made a cameo in a number of Disney movies, but sadly, his time has come to an end. In Finding Dory, there's a scene where we see Herbie at the bottom of the ocean. He's badly decayed and covered in moss, meaning he's been down there for quite some time. Now, I don't know if Lindsay Lohan pushed the car into the ocean or what, but we all know that cars and oceans or large bodies of water don't mix. So sadly, his time has come to an end. And in our number one spot, we have the three little pigs. Disney is sick for this next Easter egg. So for this one, let's jump back in time and take a look at Disney's animated short, The Three Little Pigs. In one scene, we see the pigs singing and dancing in one of their homes. But beside them in the back is a framed picture of sausages. As we all know, sausages are made out of pig. To make matters worse, the frame is labeled as father. So their father got turned into sausages and then eaten. In another scene, we see another framed piece of meat. This time, it's like a ham leg or something, and it's also labeled as father. So the three little pigs' father was killed, hacked up, and sold as different meat items. Like, that is so twisted and sick. Starting off this countdown, we have Dumbo's father. Who doesn't love Dumbo, the cute little elephant with big ears? Now, did you know that the story of Dumbo was loosely based off of a real elephant? But in real life, the story is very dark and depressing, which makes this whole movie unsettling. So in the film, Dumbo's mom is Miss Jumbo. This is a reference to a real life famous elephant named Jumbo, a male African bush elephant who has tortured his whole life and then killed. You know how we don't see Dumbo's father in the film? Well, that's because his father is the real life Jumbo, meaning we don't see Dumbo's father because he's dead. Way to go, Disney. Way to ruin this movie for us. Moving on at number nine, we have the spinning wheel. Aurora from Sleeping Beauty isn't the only princess that has to look out for a dangerous spinning wheel. Rapunzel from Tangled has to as well. In one scene, we can see the spinning wheel in the background of Rapunzel's room. 
Hey, maybe her and Aurora are related somehow. I don't know, they just both have blonde hair. Anyways, why would this deadly spinning wheel be in her home? Maybe Maleficent is coming after her too. Or is Mother Gothel actually Maleficent in disguise? These are the hard-hitting questions, people. Coming in at number eight, we have the West Wing. I can no longer watch Beauty and the Beast the same after learning about this Easter egg. So obviously everything is alive in Beauty and the Beast, from the furniture to cutlery and dishes. They're all alive because of the witch's curse. Here's the thing, in the scene where Belle goes to the West Wing, we see the whole room is littered with broken furniture and torn paintings, etc. Remember, the furniture is alive, but this furniture isn't. Meaning, the beast must have murdered a bunch of his servants or something like that. All those broken pieces of furniture, in reality, are dead people. So Belle literally stumbled upon a murder scene. Isn't that just peachy? Totally ruined the movie for me. Coming in at number seven, we have Bambi's mom. Bambi had one of the saddest opening scenes. Like, don't even get me started. If you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, Bambi's mom gets killed by a hunter. Fans have pointed out that Disney repeated this exact scene with Bambi's mom in the movie The Jungle Book. You know, just to add salt to our already hurt wounds. So in the film, we see Shere Khan stalking a deer. The deer looks an awful lot like Bambi's mom and even has the same mannerisms. People were like, really Disney, you're putting us through that all over again? That's messed up. But honestly, it could have just been that they were lazy, so they used the same deer in animation to save time. They actually do that a lot. But either way, thanks Disney for that reminder. Moving on to number six, we have the lost toy. One of our favorite heroes from Toy Story can be seen in Finding Nemo. That is Buzz Lightyear himself. In the movie, when we see the dentist's waiting room, you can see Buzz Lightyear laying on the floor there. Buzz is still a sentient being. He's got thoughts and feelings. I bet he doesn't like being handled by a bunch of germy little kids daily. Plus, he's separated from all his friends. That's gotta be hard for him. I wonder how he winded up in that situation. Let's just blame Andy's mom. Like, she seems to be the true villain of Toy Story. You know, so she probably has something to do with it. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Sherlock Holmes. Did you know that Disney used real audio of a dead person in one of their movies? I'm not lying. It's true. So there's a scene in Basil the Great Mouse Detective where we see the shadows of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. In this scene, they used audio from actor Basil Rathbone. He was well known for his role of Sherlock Holmes himself. Just one thing, Rathbone had been dead for 20 years at the time of the movie's release. He had no say of his voice being used in this film. And when you think of it, using a dead actor's voice is kind of creepy, don't you think? I don't know, a lot of people were mad at Disney for doing this and just found it weird and wrong. Moving on to number four, we have Pinocchio. Hate to break it to you, but Pinocchio did not have a happily ever after like we all thought he did. This dude wasn't grateful anyway. Like, poor old Geppetto, like, sold his soul for his son. And what does Pinocchio do to him? Run off and abandon his new father and then cause them both to be eaten by a whale and almost get killed. I'm just salty, okay? Anyways, years later, Pinocchio is dead and is no longer a real boy. This is proven during the 2010 film Tangled. During the big I Have a Dream musical number at the pub, you can see Pinocchio's lifeless body chilling in the rafters. He's laying there motionless, making it seem like he's back to being a puppet. It's actually quite eerie. And also that means that poor Geppetto lost his son again. I wonder what mess Pinocchio got himself into this time to wind up dead and hung from the rafters. Coming in at number three, we have the Haunted Mansion ride. So let's take a break from talking about Disney movies and let's talk about the attraction. In particular, let's talk about the Haunted Mansion ride. This ride has a number of creepy Easter eggs. For example, outside of the ride, there's a hearse used as decoration. Well, guess what? Apparently, that hearse was once used to carry the corpse of a 19th century man and religious leader, Brigham Young. So yeah, it was once used for a real dead body. Then inside of the ride near the loading zones, there's a portrait of an old widow by her husband's grave. This is a depiction of a real person as well. So it just makes the ride that much more creepier. Moving on to number two, we have the hyenas. I think 
think Disney needs to think twice before adding certain Easter eggs into their films, especially this one. So let's take a look at The Lion King, shall we? During one of the final scenes in the movie, we see all the bloodthirsty hyenas looking down on Simba. In the background, we can see the silhouette of a Scottish Terrier. It's none other than Jock from Lady and the Tramp. Now, I don't know about you, but hungry hyenas and dogs don't mix. So one can assume that Jock was probably held captive by them and then eaten. As a dog lover myself, that's a pretty disturbing Easter egg, if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we have the Disney moms. This has to be one of the most sickening Easter eggs on this list. So I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the characters in Disney movies are lacking mothers. Like Belle, Ariel, Jasmine, they don't have moms. Bambi's mom gets killed, Simba's mom dies, you get it. Well, this was done purposefully by Walt Disney himself because he blamed himself for the death of his own mom. After the success of Snow White, he bought his parents a home as a gift. Sadly, due to a gas leak from the furnace, his mother died of asphyxiation. His father almost didn't make it. Since he was the one that bought his parents the home, he thinks her death is his fault. He felt so guilty that he couldn't even bring himself to put mother figures in his own movies. That is so sad and dark. Coming in at number 10, Scar is a rug in Hercules. Nobody likes Scar. The oddly British brother of King Mufasa who ends up conspiring to murder him is just, you know, a bit of a douchebag. Scar is a bad lion. I categorically don't agree with hunting animals and I find decorating with death a bit morbid, but it happens and some people have say moose heads on plaques on their wall or polar bears or lions turned into rugs. Anyway, in The Lion King, sassy old Zazu says that Scar would make a very handsome rug. And well, it seems he did. At the end of Hercules' Zero to Hero sing song, he dances with a lion pelt which he then throws on the ground in style of a rug. Have a little look. Looks a lot like Scar, doesn't it? Dead skinned Scar. Honestly, maybe in this lion's case, he got what was coming. Coming in at number nine, we have Clayton's corpse in Tarzan. I knew that Clayton died in Tarzan, but I never realized that his dead body flashed before my young eyes. So Tarzan and Clayton fight, but unfortunately for Clayton, he takes a few wrong moves and ends up falling into vines. A long drop and a scream was enough for me to realize that someone had died in Disney. Although realistically, I guess something could have saved him. But no, Disney makes it super clear without any of us realizing. If you look what happens when lightning flashes, you can see him hanging. Creepy and really scary. Coming in to number eight, we have swastikas on Pongo's back. The late Walt Disney has regularly been accused of being an anti-Semite. He created a dubious and tone-deaf cartoon of Donald Duck dressed as Hitler reading Mein Kampf. He also hosted popular Third Reich Nazi film director Lenny Riefenstahl in his studios. If all of that didn't happen, then maybe I would consider this more of a coincidence, but have a look at Pongo's spots on his back from this frame in 1961's 101 Dalmatians. Weird. Right? Honestly, I think this maybe is more of an awkward coincidence than an Easter egg, but a lot of people do think that perhaps one of the animators at Disney had something to do with it. Was it a signal? Coming into number seven, we have full frontal nudity in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Adults might not find this so scary, but this is definitely worrying and inappropriate for a Disney film. There is straight up full frontal nudity in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. To be fair, the character of Jessica Rabbit is pretty not okay for kids anyway, what with her Daily Mail headline inducing skin tight dress and thigh high slash. But it seems that Disney animators added one more minor detail. She's going commando and we find out in one frame. There she is. As she is in a car accident and thrown out of a car and tossed in the air, we see her legs akimbo. Honestly, I do get it though. You can't get smooth lines in a dress like that with underpants on. Coming in at number six, we have the lemon party in Cars 2. I'm sorry, but what the lemon is going on here, Disney. If you haven't heard of the phrase lemon party, you must have missed out on our things you shouldn't Google series. Lemon party is most certainly a thing you shouldn't Google, and it is also one of those Reddit bro chat fist bump gross things that lads, lads, lads in their late 20s and early 30s like to discuss over sips of bottled beer in their San Francisco design studios. Too descriptive? Sure. 
Anyway, some cheeky animators made a reference to it in Disney's Cars 2. If you know what it was, you would know that actually referencing it isn't okay. It is so obvious that it's a lemon party too, there are an abundance of lemons and party hats and it makes no sense in context of the story. I have never noticed this, but I'm pretty scared at number 5, we have Snow White getting groped by a handsy forest. As Snow White encounters the huntsman, she runs away into the woods, far into the forest. As a kid I was under no doubt that the woods are a scary place to be, but it turns out I missed out on the fact that actually, they're even scarier than I thought. As she runs for a few seconds, the woods appear to be alive and hell bent on groping the young princess. Seriously have a look. The the branches have fingers and creepy, spindly, gropey fingers at that. Honestly, how terrifying and non consensual. Not okay, Disney. Coming into number four, we have the Muses are the Haunted Heads. Okay, we're back to Hercules. I love Hercules. Hercules and Disneyland share a scary little Easter egg between them. As the Muses sing with Meg in I Won't Say I'm in Love, they line up like this. Have a look. This turns out to be exactly, exactly how the head statues are sitting situated in the Haunted Mansion attraction in the Disneylands. What is Disney trying to tell us? I have to say Hercules is one of my favourite Disney movies and the Haunted Mansion is one of my favourite Disneyland rides, so… Coming into number 3 we have Jack Skellington in The Princess and the Frog. I love Jack Skellington, but he is a scary dude. Undoubtedly he is the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, a scary town filled with the macabre where children throw heads instead of snowballs and the whole place is an absolute absolute scream. Yes, we know that he is lovable if a little chaotic, but I honestly would be scared to see him lurking in the shadows. And it seems that this is exactly what he's doing in The Princess and the Frog. Have a look at that shadow there. To me, it looks a lot like the spooky pumpkin king, does it not? Coming into number 2, we have skulls in Gaston's eyes. Gaston is gas gone after his fight with the beast. He has nobody to blame but himself either. He is the worst from the very beginning. At the end he breaks into the beast's home, shoots him and stabs him. He is not a gracious loser. There is no way that he could have survived the fall from those turrets to the ground, but in any case if we were amid any confusion, Disney pops in a scary morbid easter egg. That's right, for a few terrifying frames we see skulls in Gaston's piercing blue eyes. What a way to tell the audience that he was doomed. Finally coming into number 1 we have numerous Shining references in Toy Story. Have you guys ever seen The Shining? It is terrifying, but it is one of Stanley Kubrick's finest works. The story is about a man who goes mad, is haunted by ghosts and tries to murder his whole family, and there's a whole bathtub thing that I think we'll just save for another day. Scary, sure, but film buffs tend to love Stanley Kubrick and the Toy Story creators are no exception. The Shining is referenced throughout all of the Toy Story movies pretty heavily. The number 237 for example, the number of the spooky hotel room with the bathtub lady that we're not talking about comes up all of the time in the movie, and that carpet there is the same carpet from the Overlook Hotel in the horror film. If placing nods to one of the scariest books and films of all time in a children's movie isn't a scary easter egg, I honestly don't know what is. 